Okay, so we covered gases in the last video, and now we're going to be covering liquids. And liquids, much like gases, uh, will take the shape of whatever container they're put in. For instance, when you fill up a glass of water, it will take whatever shape the cup is. That is, all this here at the bottom, due to gravity, is liquid. However, unlike gases, which when put in a container, you can then shrink the size of the container, and the gas will shrink as well. Liquids are what are known as incompressible. That is incompressible. So they have a definite volume to them. Unlike a gas, you cannot change their density by shrinking them down because unlike a gas where there's all this empty space all around them, uh, in a liquid the molecules are much more tightly packed together held together by attractive forces between molecules. However, just because they are held together by forces does not mean that they are not in motion. In fact, these molecules will vibrate, you know, up and down, side to side, uh, in and out, what have you. Because if you'll remember, part of the kinetic molecular theory is that individual molecules are always in perpetual motion. Liquids are simply in a state where this amount of motion isn't enough to overcome the, you know, hydrogen forces or dipole-dipole attraction or London dispersion forces. That is the intermolecular forces. Oh, forgot the bottom on the eye. The intermolecular forces that uh, attract different molecules that we covered in chapter six. In some cases, though, there is enough motion at the top levels of the liquid where some molecules can escape and become gases up here above the liquid. These molecular vibrations and the intermolecular forces uh, are sort of always at odds with each other, fighting one another. So the molecules of liquid, because they're moving up and down, left and right, etc., can sort of flow over or under or around one another, which is why they're the liquid, as I mentioned in the previous video, is still a fluid. It still takes the shape of its container because the molecules are all linked together. However, they can flow so that they form the correct shape. They glide past one another just as molecules in a gas do. However, they're still attracted to their neighbors enough where they can't just fly off except for at the surface. So most liquids have a relatively high density. And so what this means is that when they're a gas versus when they're a liquid, which I'll draw with a less structured shape this time, they're hundreds of times more dense when they are in this liquid form, which means that when under gravity, which you'll always be operating under, the liquids will always uh, go to the bottom of a container versus their gas form. However, when compared to a similar solid, uh, liquids are only about 10% uh, less dense than their solid forms. Or in the case of water, ice is actually less dense than you know, liquid water. So that's why ice will float in a glass. And depending on the material, Various liquids have various densities, which is why, for instance, if you put, if you have a container and you put, let's say, water in and then vegetable oil, which is less dense than water, it will float on top. And it won't mix because of a different property we'll discuss later. But different materials have different densities in the liquid phase. It's not like a gaseous phase where depending on the volume and number of molecules you have and temperature, pressure, etc., you'll almost get a uh, consistent density every time. As I mentioned earlier, liquids also tend to be very incompressible. Uh, they tend to have a very definite volume because unlike a gas where the molecules are spread out and if you push in on them, you know, make the container smaller or whatever, the number of molecules will stay the same, but the space in between them will decrease. Liquids are already very close together. 
So if you try to compress them, you can slightly decrease this tiny amount of space in between. The problem is you're only going to squeeze, you know, four or five percent uh, more density out of the liquid because the atoms will start running into each other and the repulsion between the electrons will keep them from uh, getting any more close together. Liquids like gases also have the ability to diffuse into one another as long as they uh, don't repel each other like oil and water that I mentioned earlier. However, it's much harder for two liquids, I'll exaggerate the space in between the atoms in this example just for the purposes of what we're doing here, but it's much harder for you know atoms of one liquid to mix with atoms or molecules of another because there's less space in between and though liquids are still you know vibrating up and down making room and closing gaps repeatedly over and over again because there's less space they can't just you know fly through another liquid because they'll encounter other molecules and sort of bounce back unlike in a gas where all the atoms or molecules are spread out so a foreign atom or molecule can then travel a long distance before it runs into uh, something else and is deflected back where it came. One way to make uh, diffusion occur faster in liquids is to increase the temperature and this is because as the temperature increases you'll remember things start moving faster that is they have more uh, kinetic energy so these gaps that form when you know two different molecules sort of bounce off each other these gaps will form more often allowing foreign liquids to squeeze in more easily liquids also have a property called uh, surface tension and surface tension is the tendency of a liquid to want to form a shape with the smallest possible surface area and they do this by using the intermolecular forces between molecules that are you know on the edge of the container or a drop or what have you butter for instance has a very high uh, surface tension because its intermolecular forces are hydrogen bonds and as we know hydrogen bonds are the strongest of the three intermolecular forces that we've studied now surface tension works because the molecules that are on the outside of a shape for instance these molecules here feel an attraction to their neighbors as well as to the molecule here in the center and all around so they want to form uh, bonds that go in towards the center and the same is true you know down here and over here on the sides etc and if you do this you know an infinite amount of times or however many uh, molecules there are around the drop you're going to get a net pull inwards and a net pull of equal strength inwards all over the place will form a sphere and this is because a sphere has the lowest ratio of surface area to volume of any shape and if you look at say the center drop it is attracted to all its neighbors in all directions so it doesn't have this surface tension that the other ones have because it has uh, neighbors on all sides canceling out these arrows surface tension and intermolecular forces are also partly responsible for a uh, property of liquids called capillary action and capillary action is the attraction of a liquid to the surface of a solid for example let's take a paper towel you'll notice if you dip a paper towel in a container of water the water will actually rise to a level some arbitrary level up here where you never dip the paper towel to and this is because if we you know sort of blow this up if we look inside the fiber of the paper towel the molecules of the water because they are you know polar charged they will stick to 
the walls of the fiber and this charge will pull more molecules up from the basin down here until eventually the weight from all these molecules of gravity cancels out with the attraction of the walls of the fiber and the water will stick at some level. And this is the same reason that you can step in a puddle and you can get your jeans a little bit wet, say down at the bottom of the pant leg, and that water will gradually rise, you know, halfway up your calf and you're saying to yourself, why do I have so much water on me? I didn't step knee deep in a kiddie pool or anything. And this is because of capillary action. The same thing occurs when you have a test tube full of water and it forms a little sort of U-shape like that is because in the center these molecules have nothing to grab onto so they're just sort of sitting on the surface however if you look at the side of the container the water molecules are sort of climbing up like they did over here and because of the attraction between them they'll sort of gradually fall down to form this U-shape going to the other side of the container. Finally, we're going to be talking about liquid's ability to evaporate. And first of all, when any liquid changes to a gas, it's through a process called uh, vaporization. Now, vaporization is when a liquid changes, liquid changes to a gas by any process, including both evaporation and boiling. However, evaporation is when a liquid goes to a gas without boiling. That is, the molecules within the liquid, uh, one or two, simply escape and become, you know, gaseous molecules doing whatever up here in the air. Now, evaporation occurs because if we blow up, let's say, the surface of the liquid, where there's a bunch of different molecules all vibrating, the temperature of a liquid solid gas or whatever is the average of the kinetic energy of the substance. This means that some molecules, like say this one on the end, will have a very high kinetic energy while others will have a very low. However, it averages out to whatever the temperature is. But this means that the ones with higher than average kinetic energy, once they reach the surface, are able to escape and have enough energy to overcome any attraction to the liquid molecules down here and enter the gaseous state. And though evaporation occurs in almost all liquids because odds are there's going to be a few molecules that have higher than average kinetic energy, if you raise the temperature and therefore raise the average kinetic energy, you're going to get a higher rate of evaporation more molecules are going to start leaving because more of them have enough velocity to overcome the attractive uh, forces that hold them in the liquid state down here. Now while evaporation is the change of liquid to gas at the surface, boiling on the other hand is the change of liquid to gas throughout a solution. So for example if you had water and you had been heating it you know, let's say that's poorly drawn fire down there, and you heated it to its boiling point, you would start to get uh, little bubbles forming of water vapor throughout the entire uh, beaker full of water. And this is because enough molecules are gaining uh, enough speed become gaseous so rapidly throughout the solution that they'll start to form gas bubbles in here and because the gas bubbles are less dense they'll naturally rise to the top and then these molecules will escape out into the room. That's the main difference between evaporation and boiling is that boiling uh, changes liquid to gas throughout the uh, solution whereas evaporation molecules only go into the gaseous state at the surface of the liquid. Finally, we're gonna end with a quick note about the formation of solids. So if you start with a liquid like this, where all the molecules are sort of held together by the attractive forces, and then you take the temperature it's at and decrease it enough 
the attractive forces will begin to line up the molecules of the liquid into an orderly strict sort of lattice and this is what we call uh, freezing or solidification if you want to be fancy and this is what happens when you take liquid water and turn it into ice or candle wax once you've heated it up it melts and runs down the candle and then once it cools down enough it will you know form little drops at the bottom of the candlestick etc it's just a liquid losing enough energy to become completely ordered by the uh, attractive intermolecular forces.